Welcome, everybody, to the first session of our Alma 2023 Roadmap Webinar Series. This is session one. I am Yoel Cortex, Senior Librarian at Ex Libris, and we have with us today Mr. Moshe Schechter from Alma Product Management, who will be discussing some aspects of resource sharing in the Alma 2023 Roadmap Webinar Series. Before we begin, I'd like to bring to the attention of all of the participants the entire roadmap webinar series you should all have already the link here i'm going to put it in the chat anyway but i know most of you have already visited this page because i see that that's where people registered from so i sent out the link there in any case this is our roadmap webinar series our next session in exactly one month is the improved digital file display in the new Alma viewer. Uh, you may have also seen that we changed the time of this. It was originally scheduled to be two hours later than it is now. And we moved it two hours early in order to, to attempt to accommodate the maximum number of institutions. Uh, then that's going to be followed by March 22nd, the new and improved Alma Analytics interface inside Alma. That's changes in Alma for Alma Analytics, not changes in analytics itself, but how analytics is managed inside Alma, an exciting session. Then we're going to move to control digital lending, another hot topic. Uh, then we've got linked open data. And we have some more sessions which aren't yet scheduled, but they will be scheduled soon, but we've already got the topics in here. Uh, this will be another one by Moshe, Last Resort and Resource Sharing, uh, more on what we call library independence. Again, that will be myself with Moshe, Limiting Retrieval and Analytics Reports by Library. Uh, then we've got more on the library independent statistical categories for library level, level management. Uh, the new and improved Alma overlap analysis tool. We're constantly adding to that new overlap analysis tool, which was originally released in 2022. And we recently added support for physical inventory in there, and there's more exciting stuff coming up around that. Uh, enhanced repository search user experience, and then a general workflow simplification around patron services and next generation purchase order lines. So that's what we've got coming up. And as we already stated today, we have with us Moshe Schechter. Moshe will be discussing resource sharing, document delivery requests, and copyright rules. After the session, we will be posting the recording to this page. It will go to YouTube and then be linked to from this page. And without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing and turn this over to Moshe. And take it away, Moshe. I will change your role to a presenter, and it's all yours. You will? Yep. OK, so um, let me start by sharing my slides. Okay, we see you, Moshe. Okay. All right, so you can see my slides right now. That's correct. Okay. Okay, so um, what we'd like to uh, uh, discuss today is the... Um, I'm sorry, just one second. Something here not working as I expected. While you're doing that, Moshe, let me just tell everybody, if anybody has a question or a comment, feel free to send it in through the chat. I'll be monitoring the chat. Uh, we'll be stopping periodically, and we'll discuss the questions or comments. Okay. So now you can see my slides, I think. <clears throat> yes, we do. And I'm able to scroll through them. All right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, welcome to our session about uh, uh, document delivery uh, in Alma resource sharing. 
Um, what we'd like to kind of connect the dots is to some features that have to do with um, article resource sharing, document delivery. Um, and these are features that have been developed over the last year and perhaps even a little before that. Uh, but our purpose is to kind of uh, connect some dots that uh, you may be missing. And hopefully through the session, we'll be able to see uh, the entire functionality end to end. Uh, now we will we will be discussing the uh, basic Alma resource sharing uh, for article document delivery. Uh, those of you using Rapid ALL have additional access to a world of document delivery and resource sharing through Rapid ALL. And those of you perhaps that may have Rapido or um, um, or have access to Rapido to other Rapido users uh, have a bunch of other potential uh, access to document delivery services. What we'll be talking today is what you have in Alma resource sharing. Uh, and this is, of course, relevant even if you do have Rapid ALL or even if you do have Rapido, uh, in order to be able to access other suppliers that are perhaps not using Rapid ALL or not using uh, uh, Rapido, the Alma resource sharing uh, does give you access to document delivery services, borrower and lender, uh, using the Alma resource sharing component. And that's the scope of our discussion today. Um, what we would like to talk about is a few um, topics. Um, basically, talk about requesting articles. Uh, we will demonstrate the process of requesting articles in Primo, Alma, and managing the whole workflow end to end. Uh, we'll talk briefly about some policies and configurations that are relevant for this process and talk about licenses uh, which may be used uh, to control the resource sharing process. So, lenders may control what they share um, through their, their license records in Alma. And of course, a very important topic about copyright management and take a look at some of the enhancements that have been recently done uh, to enable uh, better management of copyrights uh, in this process. Okay, so we've got a lot to cover and uh, let's start uh, right on with it. Uh, so the first topic, we want to talk about requesting articles. Um, and the basic thing that I would like to uh, demonstrate with you today is the use of this setting that is uh, on your screen right now. There's a fulfillment configuration uh, that is called RSU Resolver Locate, which enables Alma to enhance its locate process so that lenders' resources may be located, if they're electronic, down to the article level. Okay, so we know there's a locate process in Alma that enables a, a road on the borrower side to be created based on known information about what lenders own. The basic process searches the lender's uh, database, if whether Alma or not, uh, by metadata, ISBN, title, whatever you configure the process to do. But when we're talking about physical resources, it is not able to uh, identify whether the specific issue that you may be looking for, the specific article, is indeed owned by the lender. However, when the lender owns that resource in electronic format, then setting this parameter up to be true will enable you as borrower to have your locate process uh, be fine-tuned and actually uh, detect lenders that have the specific article that you're requesting, not only uh, access to the journal. Now, obviously, that adds a lot of accuracy to your um, locate process, creates a more uh, accurate uh, rota uh, because the lender will be put into your rota as borrowers only if the lender has the specific article that you're looking for. And that's what we want to uh, look at. So this little clip here uh, will take us through this process. Uh, we'll have a lender side, which is our open university, which you see right now. Uh, that will play the role of our, of our lender. This lender will have a journal that we will want as borrowers uh, from another institution uh, to be able to uh, request. So that's the journal. It's the journal of the Franklin Institute. That's the journal we'll be using and we'll be requesting articles from this specific uh, uh, journal. So we can see that the lender here, the Open University, has this journal. And if we take a look at the electronic inventory, that this lender has. So we can see that the coverage here is from the year 2000 to 2021. That's how I've uh, set up this portfolio here on my lender side. So we expect articles from these 21 years to be requestable from this lender. And this is an example of an article that is from 2021, which is within range. 
So it is expected to be a requestable article. So I will take this article information and we will uh, walk through the process of requesting this specific article as a borrower. And you want to see how the uh, Rhoda will take on this article. So I'm starting in Primo on my borrower side, which is the Alma University. Um, and I will start by searching for this article. I'll search in the CDI, Central Discovery Index. I do not find a specific article because my institution does not own this article. So I will expand my results in order to find in CDI. And there we go, I find this article. We can see it's from 2022, actually, it's not 21. So it's not within range of the uh, cover that the lender has. Therefore, when I sign in as a borrower and will place a request for this, we expect the lender not to be put into our uh, Rhoda. So I'm signing in, I get the resource sharing form. Let's click on it and fill in that form. We got all the information uh, on the form. We just have to request it digitally, digitally um, sign the copyright statement and just place the request. Okay, so we got a request. Remember this article, as we've seen, is from the year uh, 2022. Now here's our Alma on the borrower side, the Alma University. We're looking at the borrower request list. And we can see that's our request that has been created. We can see the Rhoda is uh, rapid ILL, which means that our open university did not make it into our Rhoda. Take a look at the history of this request. We can see that a locate process has been run. So OU, which is the open university, was the default partner, but it was removed from the Rhoda and replaced with rapid ILL because the locate process did not identify this as an owned article. So even though the lender has this journal, but because the article is from 2022, which is not within range that the lender um, has subscription or access to, then the Open University has been removed from the RODA and the request in my RODA moved on to uh, try this from Rapid ILL or whatever else I may have on my uh, RODA. So that's an example of one article. Here's another one. This one is from 2021. Um, and so we'll make another uh, try to request this one. And this one, which is from 2021, is within range that we've seen the lender owns. So let's do the same thing. I'll search again the CDI, the Central Discovery Index. And uh, again, I don't find the article because my institution does not have access to it. I expand my results. And uh, now I do find the article. It's from 2021. So let's go on and quickly place this request. There's my resource sharing form, all pre populated. Request it digitally, sign the copyright statement, and create my request. So being that this article is from 2021, within the range that the lender owns, if we now refresh our uh, borrower list, then we will see the request, and this time it's for the Open University. Open University did make it into the locate process um, for this borrower request. So what we just saw is how the locate process, because of that parameter, was able to identify the um, lender, which has that journal. So see both requests are for the same journal, same SSN, but the locate process was able to identify that the specific article, the specific coverage that we're requesting uh, is owned or not owned. So the first request was not, and the second is. And this way, um, the locate process was able to uh, create a fine-tuned rota. So when we're gonna be sending this request to the Open University, we know it's a request that the, um, this article is actually owned by the uh, Open University. Okay, so what remains for us to actually do is to uh, walk through the process of uh, actually managing this, uh, this request. Moshe, perhaps this would be a good opportunity to stop and see if anyone has any questions before we start dealing with the request which has been created does anyone have any questions or comments i don't see anything in the chat let's just make sure everyone's still with us everybody still hear us okay see us okay okay moshe they still see us still hear us they just don't have any questions okay so okay. go on moshe sorry for the interruption yeah, sure okay so we're going to be taking a looking a look now at the lender side so we can see the full end-to-end -end, uh, process the request is not here yet. 
we haven't sent it on the border side. Okay, so refreshing is not going to help us. Okay, so let's move to the border side. It's ready to be sent. We haven't sent it, so let's do a send here. Okay. Okay, so now the request is sent away from the borrower side. Let's move over to the lender side and start processing this request. All right, so here's a lender request. That's the article we requested, um, and we can see it here in a task list. We can see it's owned electronically. It's because we know our lender does have this um, in an electronic format. And fulfilling it will be by download the electronic resource. That's the name of the action in the new UI, which we're seeing right now. Uh, so when it's owned electronically, we'll have this action, which takes us to the screen where we see full information about what's being requested. So volume issue, uh, pages, um, in, and the license terms, everything shows on this screen. Um, the coverage that we have available from 2000 to 2021, the license terms, everything is uh, here on our screen. Um, so we know we have access to this uh, article. And again, that's because the request is from within the range we own. And the link can take us down to the article or to the journal. That really depends on what the vendor allows us. You're all familiar with that. Uh, so the link there. In this example, it took me straight on to the uh, specific article, um, but that would depend on um, what the vendor allows you uh, to link to the article or to the journal. But my next step would be now that as a lender, I got the request, I have access to it, I've seen the license terms, I know they're okay, I can share it. I would just go on and you know download that PDF, put it somewhere where I can uh, um, use it to send it away, and come back to my lending request and just do shipped digitally. Here I would uh, um, put that file that I downloaded. It's here in my downloads. And this request 5332 is ready to be shipped. All right, so now it's out of my active task list. I would remove the active filter in the facet. I would see the request, but now I have an activity status of active as facet. So I don't see the request anymore. Um, uh, it's been uh, uh, sent away. This one is another request, um, which if we take a look at and do download the electronic resource, we'll see nothing here. That's because this request, you notice the year, it's publication year 1840. I don't have access to this, certainly not an electronically one. Um, therefore, even if I get this request as lender, uh, doing a download electronic resource will not give me access. I have the portfolio, uh, but the requested year is not in my coverage. Okay, back on the borrower side, here's a request. If I refresh the task list, we can see uh, the, the request is out of my list. We don't see 5332 here anymore. Um, it's been completed automatically. If I remove the activity status active, then we will see the request. It's completed. Here it is. And that's because the um, file was automatically forwarded to the page pen. No need for any action here as borrower. The file is available. Uh, I can see it here as a borrower. And that's pretty much completed the, uh, uh, the process for the uh, uh, for the borrower side. Okay, so the request was automatically located. This page one got the email. What we'll do now is take a look at the page one. So I grab the identifier and let's take a look at this page one and see the the uh, email that this page one received. So let's take a look at the attachments of this page one. That's the requester. And here at the attachments, I can see that email. Here it is, document delivery notice. And that's the email that I got. That's the out of the box uh, uh, format of the email. More information about the specific article, pages, and information on the board request can be added to this email. This is just the out of the box one. It has all the login options here also. You would normally customize this uh, so that only the login options that is relevant for you uh, would show here. And the patron receiving this email would need to log in, clicking on the link. Uh, so it requires authenticated access to the article. 
the page main is now authenticating. And after successful authentication, um, the article is here accessible to our page main. So the patron got an email with a link uh, that gives authenticated access to the article. The next thing we want to see is that in Primo, my requests, the patron also has access to this uh, article. Uh, so it's not only the email, which may, you know, may get lost, whatever. Um, it's also here waiting on my uh, request list. Um, so uh, quite a few requests here. So if you scroll down and look for this specific article we were looking at right now, maybe down here, there it is. Okay, so that's the article. We can see it's an ILL request that's been delivered. Um, and we have this download button that gives our patron the ability to actually access that article. Okay, so there's more information here. We can expand and see full information. That's my article. And I have a maximum of two accesses. That's what my library has configured for me. That's configurable. You can change that. My system is configured to uh, allow two accesses. And here from Primo, I can download. And there we go. I get uh, access to this article, the same article that I accessed through my email. Moshe, can I uh, just bring up a question that someone asked? Perhaps this is a good point, good time. Someone asked, does the requester library need to be a member of the Rapid ILL pod? So no, what, what I'm demonstrating here is an Alma to Alma uh, without involving any Rapid or Rapid ILL functionality here. Um, so what we're actually seeing here is that even if you are a member of Rapid um, and you're able to access to get access to articles through Rapid, you can still access additional Alma sources, uh, not via Rapid which is what we're seeing here. Okay, thanks, Moshe. Okay, if the patron would now from Primo try to download again this article, we see the maximum number of users has been exceeded because the maximum is two and we accessed one through the email, one through uh, Primo, so we don't have more options to download. And that's again a configurable uh, parameter um, and that's intended to um, make sure that we are uh, in line with copyright restrictions so it doesn't remain there uh, uh, indefinitely forever um, you can limit the number of accesses in my example too and you can also limit how long the link will remain here uh, the default will be 30 days uh, it's a maximum of 90 days uh, and you can change that. So up to three months, 90 days, that uh, the request can remain here. Um, and um, um, after that, it will be removed here, uh, again, to make sure we're in line with uh, any copyright restrictions. Uh, if the maximum has been exceeded, the uh, library staff can, from the task list, from the board task list, still be able to send this request, uh, this article to the patron. It's an action on the board task list. Uh, so by having exceeded, it just means the patron cannot access it, but the library staff can still uh, send another article if, you know, patron comes to the desk and says, wow, I lost the email, I've accessed this too many times, I still need uh, um, access, whatever, library staff can still help them. Uh, a few other questions came in, Moshe, which I think were relevant at this stage. Uh, can you track how long it takes for them to, to be delivered and downloadable? Yes, yeah, so in analytics, you get that information. Uh, you can see in analytics um, um, how long it took for it to, to be delivered, how long it took it for it to be, to be accessed. Yeah. All that we is have it by, we, ha we have it even by minutes, seconds, uh, excuse me, minutes, hours, and days. And we have it broken down into all the different stages from when it's created until it's sent, from when it arrives until the patron gets it, from when the patron gets it until he returns it. Yeah, so you can create statistics, for example, for requests that you have requested and, and received and patrons did not access. You can see that in analytics or if it took them a while to, to access uh, or for the lenders to uh, supply the resource. All that is in analytics. Excellent point. Okay, uh, there's a much, much larger question. I'm not sure if you want to relate to this right now, Moshe, but this is more of a... Uh, the question is, what is the advantage of Alma to Alma lending rather than Rapid ILL? 
the, the process is very similar. What you saw right now would be the same if there was a rapid ILL in between. Uh, it's just that um, if you want to set up relationship with uh, partners that do not have rapid ILL, okay? So rapid ILL does give you access to hundreds of, of libraries, but you still may want to set up uh, something um, with a lender that does not have rapid ILL, uh, and that's when uh, this functionality we've demonstrated uh, would enable you to process requests. Uh, but the workflow, by the way, is just the same if there was a rapid ILL in between or if not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here's another one, Moshe. Is it possible to find out which institution delivered and made it downloadable to them? Yes. On the borrower task list, when you see the, uh, uh, you will see the uh, the lending library, as it's called. Uh, um, so the, uh, it, it's, it's the partner, right? So it's the partner record. And from there, you can report just like you would for a physical. Uh, you know who's your lender. No difference. Okay. Uh, and another one, how, where to set up the configuration for the access times? Okay. So for the access times, um, the access times, you mean the uh, number of accesses that would be allowed. Right, that's what I'm that's assuming the from the question. The, the person okay. can uh, clarify if they would like. So there's a parameter which I'll try to bring up as we speak here. Uh, so in the uh, in the fulfillment configuration, let's see. I'm trying to pull up an Alma system here to uh, bring it up and show. In the fulfillment other settings. Okay, we'll take a, it'll take a minute. We'll come, we'll come back to that. Okay, I'll show it in a minute. I want to show you the parameter name, and it's going to come up in a minute. Okay, so let's come back to that in the, in just three minutes. I just want to quickly walk through another uh, uh, process because what we've demonstrated and something that came up recently with uh, uh, with a few libraries, and that's the um, you know what we've just demonstrated now is a very a smooth process where the um, the patron received the email the moment that the lender fulfilled the request, the patron just got that email. That show, that, that's what we saw. It's a very quick uh, uh, process, uh, but sometimes borrowers may want to stop that process for mediation, uh, and they may not want a request to be forwarded to the uh, patron automatically, and that could happen. Uh, because, for example, you want to add, you, you receive files, you want to first make sure that they're in good quality. Uh, you want to make sure that they're uh, accessible, or if the patron uh, requires some more accessibility features on that, um, on that uh, uh, digital file. Um, or you want to add copyright information. Uh, there, so there could be a bunch of, uh, um, of different uh, uh, reasons why you may want <clears throat> to stop for mediation, and that's a parameter we're looking at right now. Borrow documents sent automatically. Um, that's a parameter that you can set to false. The default is true, which is what we uh, saw resulted in the request automatically being forwarded to the patron. The workflow will will. Uh, so what we'll see now is a process where the request is fulfilled by the lender, just like we did before. But this time it's not automatically forwarded to the uh, patron. And the reason will be that in our institution, in the uh, uh, workflow we'll look at now, the uh, borrower library has set up not to auto forward the document. And again, the reasons could be need manual processing for copyright uh, reasons, need manual processing for uh, accessibility uh, reasons. Anything that may want uh, you, you may want to uh, stop for mediation. Uh, the one caveat is that currently this setup that we'll look at is one parameter that is per institution. So if you set up to false, means that all articles are stopped for mediation, uh, and you have to manually forward them to the page when, as we'll see now, for all of your requests. Features that are coming up will enable some more. Uh, granularity to this process, for example, to say if there's some specific information 
uh, by this patron. That means requires accessibility information, um, or if there are other attributes by the lender that says do not give direct access. So there'll be more attributes that could fine tune this process. But currently we're submitting a request as, we're sp as I'm speaking here. There's a borrower request being uh, created um, and uh, sent to the lender. And the lender is gonna fulfill this request like we did before, but because of that parameter uh, being set in the uh, other settings, And here's, oops, jumped back. Sorry, that jumped. Okay, so now looking at the other settings in the fulfillment. So we can see this uh, parameter here, the borrower document delivery, which is set to false. And by the way, the parameter just on top of this, which is, uh, uh, borrow document delivery and its number of accesses. Uh, that's the parameter that controls that number of accesses uh, that I mentioned before. Okay, so it's called uh, borrow document delivery uh, maximum views, which is two as we saw here. And this is the parameter that now makes the process uh, manual. Okay. So, if I go back to my uh, borrower request, request has been sent, it's request 5342. Let's take a look at that on the lender side. It's the borrower request and here's our lender. Okay, here's our request. We will fulfill it just like we did before. So I'll download the electronic resource. We'll access that article. Okay, view the PDF, download it. Okay, so I'm now ready to ship it. I'll ship my item digitally. In my downloads. And 5342, request 5342 is uh, shipped. It's out of my list. It's shipped digitally here on my uh, lender side, completed. So it's out of my active list. But on the borrower side, we can see it's shipped digitally, but is still active. And that's because the patron did not receive that email yet. And that's your indication. If it's shipped digitally, active, that means the file is available, but has not been forwarded to the patron yet. And now I, as staff, can take a look at this file uh, before it's forwarded to the uh, patron. Um, so I have the option to uh, show file so I can view that file. Uh, I can do whatever I want with it. For example, if I just want to verify its quality, uh, then I can just uh, view the file. If I, um, okay, so it's it's been downloaded here. Um, if I want to whatever, manipulate this file, do something with it, which makes it more accessible, or again, add a copyright cover page, or anything I want to do with that. Uh, here I see the file has been supplied by the lender. Um, and then I can do whatever and upload the file after I've done whatever I want with it. Okay, so I've improved quality, added accessibility features to it, um, added a copyright cover page, anything I wanted to do with this, I can just uh, go on and upload that uh, file that I uh, created, I as a borrower, right? And once I've done that, I can do send and that will um, send the file onto the patron and complete the request. 
Okay, so just before I do the send, to take a look at the patron, that's our requester. And we can see that no message has yet been sent. Just going to the attachments. Okay, so that's our request confirmation letter. That's not the, uh, the fulfillment indication. Once I do send, that's when our patron will now receive what I've sent. The request is now completed. Uh, and this demonstrates a process where the uh, that parameter was set to, to false. The, um, the document was not automatically forwarded to the uh, patron only after I uploaded uh, the file. Okay. <laughs> So that was a, a, our first uh, section. Let's take a few minutes to talk about uh, policies. Uh, and Yael, I'm assuming you're stopping me for, for questions. So I'll Yeah, just... I don't see any more questions since the one about the configuration for the access times. Okay, so there's a lot more to cover. So I'll um, move right on to talk about a little bit about policies, specifically about lender policies. Uh, obviously, we're not all okay with uh, supplying anything that we own uh, electronically. In fact, we may have a policy that we don't uh, ship for digital uh, anything we own electronically. Uh, on the resource sharing library, we can set up ignore electronic resources. The result of that would be when I get a lender request um, that is owned electronically, if this is set up to ignore, so if this would be selected, then the request would fail to locate on the lender side, even though I do have this electronically. Because my locate process on the lender side says, ignore anything I have electronically. I'm not going to ship it anyhow. So if I get a request for something and I don't have physically, I have it only electronically, that locate process will fail. And that enables lenders to say, you know, don't bother me with requests for something I'm only electronically. I'm not going to fulfill this uh, based on my uh, uh, electronic inventory. Another option is to say um, that if the uh, borrower indicated that they want a physical copy, then ignore my electronic resources. Now we've seen scenarios where I'm getting a request for something, I own it electronically, but for some reason, the requester wants a physical uh, uh, copy. I'm not gonna ship in it this uh, physically. Uh, so again, I can set up the second parameter here that says ignore electronic resources for physical. And that would result again in a lender locate process failing because I do have this electronically, I'm willing to share it, but the borrower requested this physically, and that I'm not willing to do. And um, another option is, um, as is very common, uh, to have two titles when you have inventory owned both physically and electronically. Many times we'll have two bib records, one for the physical, one for the electronic. Uh, the other, the prefer view resolver locates results, uh, which by default is false would result in if I have a lending request um, that I have both physically and electronically, the locate will fail. And that's because if I do a locate, we see that the um, lender, the locate process finds two resources. One is physical, one is electronic. And it says, okay, I need manual processing here. Which one are we going to be using for this lending request? And that's why the locate process fails. Okay, on the lender side, if there are multiple results, the locate fails and requires manual handling like we just uh, seen here. If you know that, you know, if I have something and it's, I have it electronically and physically, I am going to use my electronic resource. Uh, don't bother me with having to mediate this process. You can just set this prefer your resolver locate to true. And in that case, the lending request will just automatically locate to the electronic resource and enable you to go on and process uh, as lender, like we saw in the previous uh, 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 demo, download electronic resource and just go on and use my electronic resource. So if you do not do this, pre uh, prefer you resolve or locate, any lending request that you uh, have that matches to two titles, typically that will happen because one is physical and one's electronic, will result in a locate fail and require manual processing. You can uh, bypass that by uh, setting this parameter on your resource sharing library, prefer your resolver locate results. And that will help streamline requests for stuff that you have electronically. 
But of course, that brings us to our next uh, uh, very important topic. And you know, we're talking about document delivery and uh, fulfilling your uh, fulfilling lending requests as lenders. Uh, but you may be willing to uh, fulfill requests as lender using your electronic resources, but not for all of your collections, uh, because that really depends on what your license terms allow you. Uh, some may be lendable and some may not. You can control this through your license records in Alma. And the license terms that you can use on the license records for that are those listed here. Um, so they can be um, set up on the license records to allow or not to allow interlibrary loan. And you can set up your system, your Alma system, to automatically reject requests that have come in for a resource that you own electronically, but the license terms says you cannot uh, use for, for ILL. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So I have my uh, BOR requests. Let's see an example of that. We keep using that same uh, journal of the Franklin Institute and requesting from the Open University. So if you go on now and take a look at our um, at our lender side, okay, let's take a look at this uh, uh, journal and at its information on the uh, lender side. Okay, so I want to search for this electronic title. That's the journal, the journal of the Franklin Institute. That's our example here. Okay, so that's our resource. If you take a look at this e-resource, okay, I want to find its license information. There's our license, ACC license. That's just my demo environment here. So let's take a look at this license record. Licenses. Okay, there's our licenses. So ACC license, there we go, it has an amendment. Let's take a look at that one. And look at the license terms. Okay, there we go. So down here, there's our interlibrary loan terms that we mentioned. Uh, and so I can configure to look at them. We can see here interlibrary loan electronic here is prohibited in my environment here. Uh, and so I can set my system to say, if the license says interlibrary loan electronic prohibited, then reject lending requests. And the way I do that is I configure my resource sharing library. And I have here this parameter for reject requests and only electronic. I can add rules here. Okay, because this parameter says I'll reject anything electronic, but adding rules here can say sometimes reject and sometimes not. And here's a rule that says if the interlibrary loan electronic is prohibited, then reject. True means reject because these are rejection rules. True means reject. So this means if the license says interlibrary loan electronic is prohibited, then reject this lending request automatically. Don't bother with me with it. Else, there's a rule here without an input that says false. False means do not reject. Okay, these are rejection rules. So false says do not reject. So these two rules mean if interlibrary loan electronic is prohibited, reject. In the other case, don't reject. And this enables me to uh, have my lending system automatically reject anything that comes in, any lending request that comes in for something that I have electronically, but the license terms says interlibrary loan electronic is um, prohibited. So here's my request, 5350. On the borrower side, I'm sending it on to the lender. Remember, on the lender side, this journal says, uh, the li has license attached to it that says electronic loan prohibited. Okay, we can see the request and we can see its status that is pending auto reject. That means that the system automatically identified that the license terms does not allow this. And it's going to take another um, minute or so for the automatic process to auto trigger and automatically reject this. So there's no manual processing here. We're just looking at the request now as the system in a few seconds will actually 
uh, update that. Uh, and there we go, it's now rejected. And that happens automatically. So I, as lender, will not look, will not see requests that are uh, waiting for my process, for my processing, if they are uh, uh, linked to license terms that don't allow this. And you can see the in the history, depending on a reject, and then the rejected, all that happened automatically. You can see the operator is the system. All that happened automatically. The uh, uh, system rejected that request. And on the borrower side, the Rhoda moved on in this example. My Rhoda says, okay, didn't get it from my Open University partner. Go on to Rapid ILO. Uh, so the Rhoda just uh, moved on. So that's how you can use your license terms um, um, and have your, your system as lender consult your license terms and uh, make automatic decisions for you if you've received electronic, if you received lending requests from something you know your license terms don't allow you to. Uh, to fulfill. So if any questions before we move on to our last se section, which will be about uh, copyright. Yeah, we do have uh, we okay. do have two questions, Moshe. The first one is, do vendors use the same license terms? So, so I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but uh, I'll say what I know to say about this. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's in what what's, you know, those those five terms of use. Um, uh, are the terms of use that you can configure uh, and the options that that terms of use allow you are the options that you can configure. So I don't know what exactly you have on your license terms and how each of you uh, manage their license terms, but your options are based on those four terms of use and the values that uh, the license records allow you to assign to them. Okay. So that answered the question. Uh, but if not, uh, if it. not, person who asked it, feel free to elaborate. Uh, next, do these rules apply to all incoming lending requests specifically? Will they also apply to requests from Rapid ILL? So this, uh, um, in, in case of Rapid ILL, you would normally uh, upload into the uh, or publish into the Rapid ILL database. Only those records that uh, you know you can you can uh, fulfill. So um, uh, Rapid is not going to forward to you as a lender something that you haven't specifically published into Rapid. It's something that you're uh, willing to share. So in case of Rapid, this is uh, managed in Rapid. You're not expected to get any request for something. Uh, um, you know you're not allowed to because you, you just wouldn't publish that to Rapid. So this is more about requests coming through ISO, whatever ISO method you may be using, um, because then you may be getting requests for something that the board, you know, didn't didn't find out that you have or don't have, or doesn't know what your license terms are. So you got a request for something you're not allowed. In Rapid, the Rapid database would already do that filtering for you. Okay, Moshe, I think I will share the screen just for one minute to show this question because we had an elaboration. Okay, so I will briefly share and then you will share again. So I'm doing share now. Okay. And then I'll give it back to you. Okay, so this is the question now that we had before. And now it's been elaborated. Do vendors use the same license terms? For example, prohibited explicit for editing license rules. Do we have to go look at all vendors and see their license terms to be able to set up license rules? So, I mean, the, the license rules have to match what you what you have. Uh, you can, if you have if you have multiple terms, and you can create multiple rules, right? So you can say uh, reject if uh, it's either this term or that term by creating multiple rules. So you can create one rule that says if this term, then reject, and another one that says if this term, uh, reject. So uh, if you're not sure about uh, how exactly your license uh, uh, records are set up, but you do know that any one of X, Y, Z is terms of use that uh, you don't want to uh, uh, to fulfill, then you can set up multiple rules, and you know by that cover all of your um, different potential terms of use. Uh, but yeah, you would need some understanding of how your license are set up and how they're uh, connected to your uh, to your uh, collections in order to be able to um, 
you know, fully use, fully utilize that, uh, those rules. Okay. All right. You're the presenter again, Moshe. Feel free to, to share and continue. We got nine minutes left, just a nine minute warning. Okay. Okay, so I hope you're back to seeing my screen. Okay. Okay, as far as uh, copyright management, a few words about that. Uh, and that's, you know, that actually is, is, uh, uh, is the same if you're using Rapid LL or not, because that uh, pertains to your borrower side uh, and how a request is managed when you're a, a borrower. And the example we will be looking at is, you know, that uh, famous uh, a rule um, where you say, if I get more than X requests, say five requests for the same article or for the same journal, and it's something that is uh, the publication that is requested is within five years, so it's a new publication, um, then block my requests. Um, so the rule we'll be looking at will be an example where I'm saying, um, Allow only, I will do it with only two requests, but you can set up with whatever number. Typically, we'd use five, I guess, to say if you request more than five uh, new publications from this, uh, from this ISSN, from this journal, then start blocking. Our example will be where the rule will be set up to block the digitization workflow. There's another option for automatically approve it. We'll briefly mention that. But you can see I'm setting up a, a copyright rule here. Uh, that says if number of requests is greater than two, time is within a, a, a year, it's a resource sharing request, and the years since publication are within five years, so it's a new publication, that's when we will want our uh, request to be uh, blocked. So let's take a real quick uh, look at that. Um, so here on my borrower side, I'll be setting up these rules in the copyright rules. I've disabled a bunch of uh, non-relevant rules here on my system and left only this one rule, which I called rule of five. And that's the capture we saw before. So number of requests is graded into time span is within a year. It's a resource sharing request and the year since publication is less than five. And that's an area where we've done some improvement uh, a couple of months ago. Um, and as we'll see, our requests will be blocked if I'm requesting more than two articles, which are from within the last five years. So I can request as many as I want uh, that are older than five years, but I will be blocked if I request more than two that are from within the last uh, five years. Uh, I mentioned there's an automatically approved option. If you select that option, the request will not be blocked. So unlike what we will demonstrate now where requests will be blocked, if you do automatically approve, requests will not be blocked. They will continue to flow on, um, but will be will have an indication of copyright approved and that will be reportable in analytics. So you can quarterly or you know yearly, whatever, uh, get a list from analytics all of those that actually required copyright uh, management um, and, and you know do whatever you need with that. So a default rule says, Anything that is not within this rule, just go on, no copyright restriction. And so now I'll pull in my Primo and do the same process we were doing before. So I'll log into Primo and place a, a request. Uh, and we'll request some articles that are older than five years and some articles that are newer than five years. So we can see how this process uh, works. Okay, so I'm in Primo. I'm searching for an article. Again, I don't find it locally. I will expand my results. We're using that same journal of uh, Franklin Institute we were using before. I don't have online access, but I do want to place resource sharing request. It's from 2015, this one. So it's now within range uh, um, that requires copyright handling. So it's 2015, we've got that information in here. Let's go on and just place this request. So no problem so far. This uh, article is older than five years. It's not within my rules. 
doesn't require any copyright handling. So this request will just flow on. We'll do another request for another article. And again, what I will demonstrating is how the requests for new articles will be blocked. Um, in the copyright rules that I mentioned, you have this automatically approved option, which will not block the request. It will just flow on, uh, but will be reported reportable in analytics. We'll see an example of that also later. So here's another 2015 one. Okay. And so far, again, I've just requested two articles that are older than five years. Not an issue. Now let's start requesting some stuff that is new. So this one here is from 2021, which is within uh, five years range. Uh, so this one actually will count against our rules because it's new, but it's actually the first request we're placing for a new publication. So even though it is within five years, but uh, it's only the first request, and uh, my rule said up to two is okay. Um, so this request is also expected to flow without any problem. Let's go on and create another one. And this one is also a 2021, and so that's our second request, which is new. And again, as per the rules, we're still okay. I'm just giving you a, a two-minute warning, Moshe. Okay. Because you want to wrap up. Two minutes late. Um, just <laughs> this. Okay. If I take a look now at my request in Primo, I can see all of my requests. So there are two requests from 2015. They're all from the Franklin Institute, the uh, Journal of the Franklin Institute, all from the same article, all four requests. Um, and we can see from 2021, there are two of them. And from 2015, there are two of them. And their status is all ready to be sent, meaning they're okay. They can just be sent out. My my rules here didn't send them automatically. They could have been just sent out automatically um, because there's no problem with them. But next, we'll create another request. And that will be our last example. Um, so this article now, uh, we'll be searching another 2021. I have to search in the Central Discovery Index. Again, expand my results because that's not an article. Journal of the Franklin Institute 2021. All right, so that's a new publication. I, as patron, place my request. Nothing different than what I did before. And my request is submitted. Everything's okay. It's just that if I now take a look at the requests, then I can see that the last request here you can see is pending approval. Okay, the last one on this list. And that means it is not ready to be sent. And that's because it's the third request for a new publication. So all the previous ones are ready to be sent. As this one is pending approval. And that's because of that rule. So the rule counted that I have two requests for a new publication, less than five years, and if, uh, um, if the third request gets blocked. If I now continue to create more requests for older publications, they will be ready to be sent and sent out without a problem. Only any request that I create that is for a publication within the last five years will uh, fall within that rule um, and get uh, blocked. So just another two minutes uh, to take a look at, um, at that. Um, so if I create another request, you know what? We can skip that part. And I'll, we take a look at the requests here in Alma. So these are the uh, requests we created. And there's the pending approval one here. Um, and the way for me as borrower to process this one, because again, I've set this up to block it. Uh, so it's, it, I don't have a send action. I cannot send this uh, until I manage the copyright. And that's our copyright status here, which is not approved. I can change it to approve if I want. Um, set the request to be ready to be sent, and then I'll be able to send it away. Okay, so the system blocked me. I, as operator, can decide to still send it away. 
uh, if I want, and it will be processed as usual. Just to finish off um, with the analytic report, this is the analytic report. Uh, we can see the copyright status information uh, being reported in here. So if you would use the rule to set up automatic approval, uh, then instead of having this set to pending approval, like we saw in this demo, the request will be ready to be sent, will be sent out. Uh, but in analytics here, you'll be able to see that copyright status and be able to report on that. So when you create your reports, uh, you'll see all of those requests with the journal information, the title, the uh, article information, publication year, and be added to this report. Uh, and then you will see all those that did require automatic approval so you can further process them. So I think I am two, two minutes overdue. But yeah, that was a fascinating uh, session, Moshe. Thanks for enlightening us on this very important topic. Uh, so everybody, you hope uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see each other again in the next sessions. You have the link to the 2023 Roadmap webinar series. The recording of this will be posted on the page, and we will notify via the Alma list when the recording is ready. So thanks again, Moshe, and thanks everybody for joining, and we'll see each other soon. Bye-bye.